I, I've never met an engineer that didn't complain about someone else's code. Like that seems oh, yeah. to be uh, the nature of the beast, right? Uh, their own code even. Right. Whether well, even their own code. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's educator session. My name is Lingo, and I am the community manager here with Educative. Educative is a makes it easy for authors to provide interactive and adaptive courses for software developers. And these sessions are largely a multi-episodic campaign to engage people in the developer world about their coding experiences. Today's guest is David Garrison. David Garrison is a data engineer with the company Quote Wizard. And today we're gonna talk about being thrown into the deep end, inheriting legacy code. David, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. David, uh, let's begin. Let's start with the very first month. So you actually wanted to talk about something that seems to happen over and over for you, which is this experience of you joining a new team. And uh, first, you know, let's start of how you seem to rapidly ascend from a new member of whatever data team you're on to suddenly being very much in charge with these teams. Sure. Uh, I, I'd love to say it's because I'm just that awesome. Uh, but honestly, it's mostly just been weird coincidences at all of the jobs I've worked at pretty much. Um, and then from there, just a matter of not utterly failing to drop the ball. <laughs> uh, in, in one case, um, I did actually come into a company and I don't want to say that I made the senior person leave, but I, I did stir things up for the better, in my opinion, <laughs> and they felt unsuited to the new ways of things. But for the most part, um, I've just, uh, at a few companies now, been in a, come in and then like the manager leaves and then the most senior person leaves. Um, and so it's kind of been uh, just an, an experience that I wanted to share. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So, you're, I mean, maybe you're being diplomatic and I'll respect your right to be diplomatic as to it's just all coincidence or in some secret circumstances is out of necessity, but it's a pretty stressful position to be in. A lot of people think, you know, motion or moving up is always a good thing. In your case, and I'd say in most cases, not necessarily, especially when it comes to the question of documentation. And uh, from my own experiences working on technical teams, documentation is critical when it comes to these transitions of responsibilities, especially from coder to coder. Um, and it's difficult when one of the coders is no longer there. So uh, okay. you have to do, what, what's your first thing that you need to do every time you find yourself in, in this position? Uh, sure. So, um, I mean, documentation is a, a great topic that's pretty well tied to this, as you say. Uh, one of my favorite adages about documentation uh, is that it's obsolete as soon as it's written. Uh, but uh, to me, that's all the more reason to have lots of it. Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> I've seen fully fleshed out wikis uh, with onboarding processes coming into a company that just need tweaking uh, based on updated software versions, et cetera, whatever. Uh, and, or like, oh, I ran into this error. Let's write that down. Uh, but then I've also been at a place where documentation consisted of, go ask Sam down the hall. I think she wrote that five years ago. Um, or uh, at my current job, uh, so this is exactly the example of what I'm talking about, is the senior person on the team who'd been on the data team for five plus years, her last day was my first day. Um, and so as, as soon as I started, it was, oh, go ask the person who's no longer here. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so I've definitely dealt with that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but um it's always you know it, it's one of those sort of questions that i always ask interviewers myself or inter interviewees myself mm -hmm. um what do you do when there's no documentation uh and it's kind of one of those it depends questions uh i've, I've definitely got some rules of thumb like if i'm stuck on something for an hour then i'll go ask for help mm -hmm. um and to try to write things down as i go gotcha gotcha so let's let's take worst case scenario. You know, you jump into a new situation. There's no documentation. There's no other alternative senior manager to go to, or even colleague right. on your team. You, it's like you are on an island unto yourself. David, sure. what did you do? <laughs> uh, it's definitely happened a, a few times. Um, so, 
I mean, a lot of times when, when you're that out to sea with, without a paddle, mm -hmm. uh, it's, I mean, it's just a technical, you got to go and, and read the code and, and learn the stuff uh, and do the research. Uh, sometimes you have to get things done quickly, you know, um, finding ways to put band-aids on things, but um, it's going slightly on a different topic. <laughs> right, right. Um, I mean, at the same yeah, time, it's tough. I can, I can understand at least uh, depends on the parameters, depends on if you've got time to sit and explore, then you will sit and explore. But if there is a right. deadline or a rush job, um, it explains at least why these things exist in code that most there, I've never met an engineer that didn't complain about someone else's code. Like that seems oh, yeah. to be uh, the nature of the beast. Right. Uh, code even. Right. Well, they're even their own code. <laughs> I think that's has that ever been the case for you. Like, have you ever had to look back into your own code and, <clears throat> Oh, like, wow. Uh, yeah. So kind of extending on the documentation topic. Um, okay. This is, this is going to come back around slight tangent. Yeah. Uh, I worked with a guy, uh, I suppose I don't need names or anything, but um, he uh, couldn't remember. He, had, he just had the worst memory. He couldn't remember that a conversation from yesterday happened, much less the details of it. Um, and he was by far one of the best people I ever worked with because he was self-aware of this. Mm -hmm. And he would write down everything uh, in very clear, concise details with diagrams. Um, and I've really tried to emulate his style. Some of the this is the coming back around to it. Some of the things that I try to bring to that is um, uh, I treat tomorrow me as a completely different person from me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I try to write things down as they're discussed instead of trying to write them down from memory later. Um, I try to compile things in an organized way with other people in mind, not just, oh, I know how my system works. Um, and and it's also like helpful to avoid fluff and when to be aware that things are going to change because as I said, documentation is outdated as soon as it's written. Um, but that's a big part of um, both preparing for other people to onboard, but also to prepare for myself, my future self to be able to, you know, uh, remember what was done. Um, so I think I went a little off track from the question. No, but. not. I think <laughs> it's funny because I, I, with all respect, I think everything you're saying is totally within the scope of what we're talking about. And uh, I'd love to know uh, even further. Where was there ever a circumstance where you, uh, you know, were essentially having to do it all by yourself? And then who's there to set the parameters of what's happening with the code? Like, is that is that when you you are basically responding to management alone and how do you become the person that reconciles the interests of say management or uh, business with what you see existing in the code at that moment? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, I've uh, deliberately uh, avoided promotions into, <laughs> into the management type positions uh, at least once. Um, but uh, I've definitely been in, in places where, yeah, I was the, the main technical uh, voice in the room who had to speak for, and, and I always am the person, and, and I try to be self-aware of this, who speaks for, let's reduce technical debt. Let's, you know, I get into a room with a VP and a, and a CEO or whoever saying like, we need to get this done and I'll say, but we need to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, and of course- Do you mind, sorry, but do you mind unpacking the concept of technical debt? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, so from the CEO's perspective in that conversation, he wants to get the thing done tomorrow. And if I really just held on to that goal of getting it done tomorrow, I could probably write something really quick and dirty. If he says, show me this number, I can, you know, I can type that number into a report. <laughs> uh, but I want to make sure that when the number refreshes tomorrow, that it's still correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that when the pipeline road loads over the weekend that it still loads correctly. And that the next engineer that comes in, when they read the code, they um, understand what it's doing. So the, the technical debt is taking those shortcuts that will bite you in the future. That's the debt part. You're paying for it later. Gotcha. Where 
Um, and so I'm always the person in the in the room that says, let's not bite ourselves, bite our future selves. Um, let's make sure that we do it right, make sure that it's stable, make sure that it's self-healing and documented. Uh, and of course, I'm not, I, and I don't want to be the person that makes that final decision. So I've definitely been in the room where they say, okay, we, we've heard your feedback, but let's do it the fast way. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, and as long as I've not left anything on the floor, uh, and, and made sure I've gotten my, my technical points in, I, I definitely have had to say, okay, we'll do it the fast way this time, and we will accept that that will um, be something that we have to pay for down in the future. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, these are all especially uh, very classical, uh, I guess, engineering concerns, right? And not, not, yeah. not with respect, uh, because these are the kinds of things that engineers know, like, yeah, you can try to do it this way, but you will incur a lot more costs and incur a lot more labor and who knows what your status could be your other people's status could be especially in this world where apparently people who are in your team are constantly changing right right what are your own practices when it comes to making sure that you uh, aren't throwing someone else into the deep end in the future i mean you've talked a little bit about your future self and so right. I'm about what are you ensuring to do just so that like someone basically is in love with working with you and knowing that you're the kind of person that thinks beyond your own concerns as an engineer. Sure. Uh, that's certainly in a good way to phrase that question uh, in a way that I haven't quite thought about it in those words. Um, uh, so I've onboarded a number of people having been in these positions where I seem to, people seem to leave right away. I've done a lot of hiring myself. Uh, and I don't know, I have, certain, I have some philosophies around that hiring. Like once somebody joins the team, I try to make sure that we can give them something that they can have complete done within the first week. Um, something that can be out in production. Um, I don't know, it, it always sucks to be, <laughs> to come into a team and spend the first two weeks putting your machine together. <laughs> uh, and so trying to make sure that those, um, those baseline things are in place. Um, is an important step. Um, but then more on the just being personable side of things. Um, I mean, <laughs> patience. Uh, but also um, um, a big thing that I do is anytime, basically anytime I say, hey, go look at this thing, start working on this thing, here's some documentation. It's and please keep that documentation up to date. When you find issues with it, make changes to it yourself. Help us build this into something better. Um, you know, I, I don't want to be the person who's in charge of the documentation. The whole point of it is to put it out there so that, that anyone can make changes to it. And so I, I wanna make that a collaborative process. Um, so yeah, from, from day one, when I have a new hire, it's always making it a collaborative thing where get them into the code, get them into documentation, have them, them help with it. Um, and then same goes for other people from other teams. It's not just new hires. Got it. Well, that's good to know. And uh, I think that's a relief probably for anybody who might be seeing you as potentially their future <laughs> teammate that like, okay, they're looking out. Uh, David, we've come to the end of our talk and I want to give you an opportunity to give a shameless plug or a shout out or anything okay. you'd like. The floor is yours. Uh, here, can I, can I shout out my dog? I've got my, my cute you little dog cam here. Yes. Dexter, Dexter, can you say hi? Yeah, this is oh, my wow. dog, Dexter. <laughs> I'm amazed with how Dexter actually did that. Yeah. Right now, as you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, here I can. Dexter. It's, it's because I usually give him a little snack. Here you go. <laughs> uh, and then I suppose. The internet by storm. These are, kind of, these are the moments people live for, it looks like. Uh, and then I suppose, eh, I suppose slightly more obligatory. Um, so I work for Quote Wizard. Uh, it is a um, marketplace for uh, people who want insurance, mostly for cars and houses um, and medical. Um, I won't go into the details, but it's that's my company. So there you go. I, I plugged it. <laughs> <laughs> I say um, you're probably the top 
data engineering evangelists I've heard so far plugging their own company. So kudos to that. And uh, I want to thank you so much, David, for being on our show and sharing a lot of your own experiences and wisdom and also, of course, sharing Dexter as well. Yeah. Uh, and I want to thank everyone else for watching or listening or being a part of this program too. Uh, please check out more of our content on YouTube or on Podbean or on various podcasting platforms. And of course, if you want to check us more out on Educative as well, you can check us out at educative.io. So for all of us here at Educative, thank you so much. Happy learning. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of Educative Session. If you liked this episode, please like it and share with your community. To stay informed about the latest sessions, subscribe to our channel by clicking the button above. Check out our podcast at educativesessions.podbean.com in the description below. Lastly, if you're tech curious, check us out at educative.io. Happy learning, everyone.